So let's watch this. It'll be a great way to kind of uh, tee off this discussion. The sky calls to us. We do not destroy ourselves. We are one day venture to the stars. Carl Sagan. <laughs> As incredible as it may seem, there will be a time, and it may be closer than you think, when we live on other worlds. The moon, Mars, and in the space between. And when that day comes, just as always, our children will look with curiosity across these new horizons with a desire to go further and to explore what lies beyond. But beyond Mars, the distances between worlds grow immensely, even within our own solar system, and become truly vast in between stars. If we ever want to reach out across these distances, we need to learn how to go fast. Nuclear electric propulsion. <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> Yeah, so this is what we know. Using our current knowledge of physics and engineering, we could build nuclear locomotives to take humans to all the worlds in our solar system. But a starship powered with a nuclear heart aimed for even our closest star, Proxima Centauri, would have to harbor hundreds of generations of people, all living their entire lives aboard before reaching its destination four and a quarter light years away. It would take two years just to reach the orbit of Saturn and another 2,000 years to reach Proxima Centauri. We need to be able to go faster. Fusion propulsion. <laughs> We should re-record this with you doing that for each other in your knowledge of physics. But with engineering we have yet to develop, we can imagine a propulsion system with the sun for a heart, a fusion engine that could accelerate a starship up to 5% of the speed of light. This ship could cross the orbit of Saturn in six months and reach Proxima Centauri in just over a century. But if we want to traverse interstellar distances in less than a human lifetime, we have to go incredibly fast. The universe has shown us that this can be done by altering the scale of space itself. And we are working to develop new understandings of physics to learn how this might be controlled. If we could construct a starship with a propulsion system that decreases space in front of it and expands space behind it, this ship could cross enormous distances effectively faster than the speed of light. Such a ship would reach from Mars to Saturn in just a matter of minutes and be able to reach Proxima Centauri in less than six months. Whoa. From there, there are no limits to where we could go. Perhaps one day, humanity will look up at an alien night sky and strain to find the pale yellow dot that is our sun, our home, and know for the first time, as we look back on ourselves, that we are not alone in the universe. This journey starts today. Whoa. First of all, whoever did the graphics Thanks, for Jamie. that. Yeah, Eric Ornquist uh, was the, the Swedish digital artist that we used to develop that, uh, that video. 
Um, and so uh, well, that guy nailed it. Oh my gosh, didn't that's he? pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, we had uh, we had a like a, a three swim lane chart, if you will. That's a very technical version of this. We we have a copy of it. We don't we don't need to bring it up, Jamie. I can just do it verbally here. Um, but uh, it kind of encapsulates that thought process of this time distance problem. Um, you know, when we think about space exploration with humans, we think about Mars, right? We're trying to we've sent human beings to the moon. We're probably going to go back to the moon uh, sooner rather than later, and then eventually we we'll want to send human beings uh, to Mars. Uh, but what if we wanted to send <clears throat> human beings to Saturn, and we want to get them there in 200 days? Um, these are that's a time frame that's kind of compatible with what we've thought about for humans to Mars: 180 to 220 days. If you frame the question that way, the amount of energy that's necessary to get humans. Uh, to Saturn in 200 days is an order of magnitude more energy than it takes to get a payload from the surface of the Earth to low Earth orbit. So all that to say, right, that particular problem, um, chemical propulsion can't solve that problem. And so this is this is starting to kind of frame the discussion, um, the, this narrative that we've pulled together when we talk to students uh, all around the globe, the difference between two space and the difference of through space. When you talk about through space, the distances are just so big, right? You have to rethink the problem, especially when you constrain it with uh, how long does it take uh, to get there, right? And so um, uh, this particular video encapsulates things that we might do uh, to solve problems like that and maybe even into another star system, talking about uh, things that we know, like the very first part of the video, the vignette was... Like you said, nuclear electric propulsion. I can't do your voice yeah. very well. Right? <laughs> nuclear electric propulsion, right? right? And so this is a situation where it's known physics, known engineering. We've got a nuclear reactor uh, that's fissioning uranium, let's say. It's splitting apart atoms, uh, and that's the source of energy. You use that energy to uh, plug into some form of electric propulsion, like you got the neon sign that's behind you. Imagine uh, you could take one of those tubes and, and cut the end off and allow the, bl the, the blue or green glowy bit to come out the back, right? And so the efficiency of electric propulsion versus chemical propulsion is much better. And so that's a way we can potentially think of a spacecraft architecture, nuclear electric propulsion, a nuclear reactor, coupled to some form of electric propulsion that allows us to send human beings to Saturn in 200 days. And technically speaking, that capability, if we didn't invent anything else beyond that, that would allow us to send human beings everywhere in the solar system. That's why that's extremely important. And now we're getting into the, the passion of what I fought, so, fought for uh, so hard working at NASA to try and advocate for this understanding of the big difference between uh, these two types of problems, if you will.